Oh, it's getting hot around here. I'm wearing my red fire shirt. There are fire issues like crazy. It's nuts, man. Crazy. Welcome into my state of mind. I am Dan York. This Friday evening, we are going to forget the rundown tonight because we've got a lot of things to talk about. The Coventry, well, the town of Coventry has been suffering from controversy from one district to the next. They thought they were doing a smart thing and consolidating from seven to four districts, and all hell's broken loose since then financially. And we'll talk to one man in the middle of that situation here momentarily and then ken block will join us watchdogri.org he's always getting in the middle of these fire cost conversations thankfully because he's created some interesting dialogue um, and we've got some you know stuff going on right now with our general assembly and legislation reacting to a north kingstown um, uh, management decision uh, that went to the supreme court and a providence firefighter dispute that now is being uh, handled by the General Assembly, and it's all discombobulated, and we'll get into that coming up. So let's start right away. I thank you for watching tonight. Here is the headline in Coventry from a couple of days ago, actually earlier in the week. Fire District Board of Taxpayers approved tax hike or dissolve the district. Uh, it's been a financial mess in Coventry overall, and when Patricia Morgan, the state representative from Coventry et al., was here with me last week, here's, uh, here's what she, uh, late, early in the week, here's what she had to say before I introduce this guy. There's one union, and it got too aggressive um, at getting wages and benefits. Um, you know, they were able to manipulate the elect, uh, election system the way that, that board members were chosen. They got their special guys, fire, firefighters and friends of firefighters on the board, and they just went crazy asking for wages and benefits. And, and, and the costs have just are exceedingly high. I mean, you can't go up 15, 18 percent a year. It's just not fair. You know, it's so funny. I was asking Frank, Frank Palin is the chairman of the Coventry Fire District. And we previewed that video. I couldn't remember whether the state representative was talking about your fire district, which is the Anthony Fire District, Coventry Fire District, which is in the corner by West Ward, or whether it was the Central Coventry Fire District, because that thing is now in bankruptcy. But it doesn't really matter because you're, no, both, they're, you're they're both, both in the about soup. The, uh, Patricia Morgan was describing both districts. What uh, a mess, huh? It is much, much worse than I ever anticipated when I joined the board. All right. Well, you ran for the board. No, I did not run for the board. You got, no, you got appointed? Uh, I, uh, someone nominated me from the audience after I introduced an amendment to reduce the budget last year and uh, never consulted me. And almost by acclamation, everybody was saying, please do it. And you're talking to the busiest man you could ever possibly meet. You. And I, I looked at it and said, I opened this can of worms. Okay, I'll see if we can solve it. And I said, yes. And then I ended up as the chairman of the board of directors. Okay. Well, that's an unusual way to get to a position of high place. I sure didn't ask for it. All right, so here, here's the thing. Uh, Welcome to the show, by the way. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, you introduced what is a four hundred thousand dollar plus reduction in the budget of the Coventry Fire District. Correct. If you, if you go back to December, uh, we had the Chief Labadia issue going on. Uh, myself, the Tim and, White special, right? Oh well, yeah, yeah. Where's the chief? And uh, the taxpayers were irate. Uh, they were at the meeting. I was irate. I felt that the board of directors wasn't doing anything about it. And when the budget was presented, it was not clear to anybody in the room that there was an extraordinary deficit. They did talk about a line of credit that was $464,000, but it was more in pie charts and financial records. And I'm a nurse practitioner, I'm not an accountant. And I felt like any other business, you could go in, make cuts, streamline, and do something about it. I was wrong. I really was wrong. I wasn't expecting what I've had right, with so trying did to you, negotiate. Did you effectuate a cut in the budget? The taxpayers voted for it, yes. Okay, so you introduced the amendment. They've got to ratify it. All and right, they so did. So you were the instigator, but they made the deal done. Mm -hmm. Are you sorry you did that? Yes. But at the same time, there's no way the taxpayers would have ratified the budget that was offered 
effectively, it really was only $100,000. What's the overall budget for the Coventry Fire Two million four hundred thousand and change. How much in the hole are you? We were between we were between six hundred and seven hundred thousand dollars at the beginning of the fiscal year. We're probably approaching a million dollar deficit now. No. Oh. We very well How could you have a million dollar deficit and a two and a half million dollar budget. The line of credit, a bunch of bills that weren't paid at the end of the year, that carried over. How many firefighters do you have? Sixteen. They're going to be looking for gigs or merge somewhere else. I kind of think so. If you look at the overtime alone. We, uh, last year, were approaching $400,000 in overtime with 16 guys. If you go per man, that's more than Providence pays. All right. So uh, the, 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 the fire district thing is a kind of a Rhode Island anomaly, and it really is. A, it's, it's outrageous. The, the notion that, that Coventry doesn't have a municipal fire department, Lincoln doesn't have a municipal fire department, Cumberland's got a hybrid now, uh, and gosh knows who else has got these fire districts. Do you agree that it's a, it's a system that was, you know, born of, uh, I don't know, the medieval times? It, was, has to it go? was born in the old mill district era. Yeah. Each major mill had a firehouse. Right. And the mill basically paid for the firehouse because there were a lot of fires at the mills. Uh, that goes back to 1880 for our charter. It's got to stop. Yes, it has to stop. All right, so last night, or I should say uh, Tuesday night, you went to the town meeting, the overall, mm -hmm. the overall town council, town meeting, the overall budget thing, and you said, hey, bail us out, right? I asked for a $500,000 grant contingent on the taxpayers approving uh, a supplemental tax increase. I asked the town to pay $550,000 to pay for all of the streetlights in town because the individual fire districts are paying it. Our bill alone is 137000 a year. And then I asked for a binding referendum to form a municipal fire department. After I made that amendment, before my second, who was ready to second the motion, uh, was able to speak, they ruled me out of order. They would not accept the uh, amendment to the budget. And then they would not give me an explanation during the meeting. You were over 3. Yes, I was. I was. So where does that leave the Coventry Fire District, Mr. Chairman? We are in big Mr. trouble now. Chairman. We are in big trouble right now uh, because I said that we needed three things to happen to survive. The first was some money from the town. The second is concessions from the fire department. With the current legislation that is taking place at the State House, I really seriously doubt that by next Saturday, we will have a contract. What's Saturday? That is when we're going to decide what the supplemental uh, tax will be. Because if we get concessions from the fire department, we're hoping for three or four hundred thousand dollars, it will reduce what we need. As it stands, okay, so it looks like the taxpayers are going to have to pay the whole thing. So on Saturday, you'll decide what the nut is and then you have a vote? We have a referendum, all day referendum that is scheduled at Club Jogues in Coventry next Wednesday from 8 to 6. People will come in and make their vote. And it will be uh, basically a um, either or question. Do you want to pay the supplemental tax increase, whatever that figure to, is determined to be, or do you want to dissolve the district? And if the answer is they want to dissolve the district, we will put into motion the things that we have to do uh, to dissolve the district. Because the third option is untenable. That is to initially now call in the state under the Fiscal Stability Act because Central Coventry did that. Their bill is very, very soon will be approaching four million dollars that the taxpayers very are being charged. Very expensive to go bankrupt or to so go into receivership. Isn't as, it? as a group like us, us as a quasi-governmental agency, and if we use the Fiscal Stability Act and bring this, the state in, the tax rate, it won't yeah. go up 30 percent, it'll double. What's the moral of the story? I think Patty Morgan had it right. Uh, there were firefighters, there were friends of firefighters on the board. I think the people in, in the town, the people in the state, we have to get our head out of the sand and start to pay attention what is taking place with our government officials because they are running roughshod over us. Special in interest groups have taken over. Come back next week or the week after as we follow your story, will you, please? I'd Appreciate be happy it. to. All right, Frank Palin, chairman of the board in the Coventry Fire District, recruited, not elected. Oh. And then you got Mr. Block. Stay with us.
We're going to be lost without it. We are. We are. We're going to be lost. Jean Boulette talks with her friends outside their apartment building in Lincoln. They're standing just a few hundred yards from the Lonsdale Fire District building where five full-time firefighters lost their job. They're oh, three God. minutes away if we call them. They're in here. Three. And they're so nice. Oh, so God, nice. they are. They're wonderful. <laughs> I'm sure those ladies are very nice neighbors. I'm sure they're good citizens, law-abiding. But they are the kinds of folks who perpetuate the problems that we have in Rhode Island. They are speaking about the Lonsdale Fire District. Ken Block has been talking about a whole bunch of fire districts on fire costs. Welcome back to the program. Thank you, Dan. Don't you agree? That, I mean, it's just kind of like this go along, everybody's terrific. Don't worry about when the bill comes. Right. I mean, what's so, Lonsdale not a fire district for anyway? What's Coventry in our last segment have four separate fire districts. We got to end this thing. Don't it you has think? to end. And in the case of Lonsdale in particular, you can drive from Lonsdale to Salesville, I believe, in under five minutes. Those two fire stations are at at the end points, five minutes, five minutes apart. So, assuming those ladies were in the middle, somewhere between those two departments, Lon Salesville is probably still going to get there in less than five minutes which is perfectly acceptable response time everywhere in the world, apparently, except in Rhode Island. All right. Fire is a big conversation this week. Huge. Huge. Uh, let me just do a couple of tidbits on some of the stuff. I don't know where I am on these cameras. I, I, I love this camera look. I hate I can't see the red light. But anyway, can you throw me up the Johnston uh, uh, stuff there? I just keep going to the wrong camera. Uh, the Johnston firefighter overtime spiking. We've talked about this before. Uh, this was an example of one city, just one town. What is that? So in Johnston is a unique case in Rhode Island because overtime is tossed into the pension calculation. So what you're looking at there, every one of those vertical lines represents a year in the career of one firefighter. We grabbed all of his payroll data going back 20 years. And the red on top represents the amount of overtime that firefighter worked. Mm. He didn't work a lot of overtime for 17 of the years that he worked. And in the last three years, the years that counted towards the pension, he went bananas on overtime. Now, this, is ex this may be exclusive to Johnston, right? This, this, that particular issue is a Johnston special, but it blows out Johnston's pension in a gigantic way. Providence doesn't have the same issue. They, don't, they don't calculate their pensions on overtime salaries. Not anymore. Understand. No. Yeah. Uh, but Providence has been the big kahuna here, the big conversation that has dominated um, the last week's worth of stuff. What is your, what is your overall, uh, well, before we get to the Providence thing, because I, I want to get your, your take on what's happening with the General Assembly, the Providence thing, the new laws that have been proposed and all of that. The complaint that folks have for you and your overall research on, on Rhode Island's fire expenses, which you can see in their totality at watchdogri.org, is that you don't calculate ambulance and all that kind of stuff properly when you are comparing a city in Florida and a city in California versus a city in Rhode Island dramatizing these high differentials well, and expenses. That's, that's what uh, some firefighters push back against. We, when we compared Metro Rhode Island, which is the eastern half of Rhode Island, uh, almost every fire department we compare them to had the words fire and rescue as part of the official names of those departments. So what they're saying was, well, you're not including ambulance. Well, we were. Uh, Los Angeles provides ambulance service. Chicago provides ambulance service. Dallas provides ambulance service. Prince George's County provides ambulance service. Orange County, Florida provides ambulance service. So I'm not sure which of the comparison points we are using that they feel don't contain ambulance, but every single one of them, because I double checked it. No, I think what did. they're saying is, is that you're including ambulance service in the high cost of running an operation. Because ambulance service is embedded in the fire department right. responsibility. So you can't cut it out. No, what, what, what the pushback has been, what, they've been, what I've been hearing, is they're saying, you're comparing Rhode Island, which provides ambulance service, with a whole bunch of places that don't. Right. But we compared it to places that do. Okay. So the cities that you have compared and regions you have compared 
are comparable in their services. In every way. Just not comparable in their expenses. Or, well, not in their expenses and not in the amount of gear, men, and equipment and, and fire stations. We have more firehouses, more firefighters, and more fire engines in metropolitan uh, Rhode Island, or in Rhode Island proper, all of Rhode Island, than Dallas and Phoenix combined. And Dallas and Phoenix combined have more than three times our population. So that's really, there's two things that drive the cost of fire. Let's just talk cold facts at this point. Let's strip it all out of here. What costs us is the shift structure that we use in Rhode Island. We use a very inefficient four platoon shift structure. How we organized our departments is designed to cost us more than anywhere else, and it does. And the other piece of it is the number of fire stations and the amount of equipment that we have, which is far in excess of what we need for the size of our state and the coverage that we have to have. All right, when we come back, we'll talk about both those things as it pertains to the current controversy. Stay with us. This, of course, is uh, watchdogri.org, a website that you should be familiar with. You know, whether you agree with the data and the research, well, data is hard to disagree with. You know, how data is applied to make arguments is the kind of stuff that you can debate over. But um, uh, a lot of the work that Ken has done didn't stop participating in the public discussions after losing the governor's race on the primary side, on the Republican side. Um, and you should be thanked and admired for that. Hey, by the um, way, I think anybody who simply just shows up to run the race and doesn't actively engage and participate in, in things uh, is a bit of a pretender because they're not actually working for the purpose of public good, they're actually working for their own purpose. I can live with that. So your discussion of the, full, the, the, the big problems of the number of fire stations and the four platoon versus three platoon thing. The big yeah. thing that's been happening here, North Kingstown and Tiverton have gone from four platoons to three platoons. North Kingstown got themselves caught up in a, in a, in a court battle uh, got beat at every interval until the state Supreme Court and to simplify the conversation the Supreme Court uh, uh, decided that a town can make a management decision to change the course of operation meaning go from four to three platoons but that has to collectively bargain mm -hmm. a bill came up in the Senate in, 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 the, in the General Assembly in response to that from labor which intends to force platoon changes into collective bargaining. Yep. I'm not sure that that's got a lot of traction. I think it might be dying on the vine. But the second wave comes in after Providence has this big to do when Mayor Alorza says, I'm going to change from four platoons to three platoons. He, I think he tactically messed up so far, at least, his negotiation. We'll talk about that in a second. But the sum is, is that the union went the other way to the General Assembly and now a bill is in there that would mandate overtime pay over 42 hours average for union firefighters and police officers. That's their response. The four platoon to three platoon requires them to move from 42 hours to 56 hours. And so there's the rub. Give me your quick analysis about that. Well, first of all, the General Assembly has no business legislating overtime, especially overtime Federal, that overrides federal law. Federal law acknowledges that 24-hour fire shifts make for a longer work week, and federal law says that firefighters can work a 53-hour week without overtime. So why would Rhode Island pass a law overriding federal law for firefighter overtime and making it far more expensive for us? We already have amongst the most expensive fire protection in the country. That all by itself makes not a shred of logical sense to me. Do you think it's beatable in the court system? The in other words, if, 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 oh. the, if the mayors get uh, come together and say, listen, the law itself is, is against federal standards, unconstitutional, I haven't studied that. What I, do you think? I, I think that Rhode Island can certainly pass laws that if they want to pay firefighters even more than what the federal floor is, I suppose they can. I think in the court of public opinion, they're going to pay an awful price for it, and they should. Mm. Because the last thing in the world our cities and towns need is even more expensive fire protection than we have right now. This law, saying that all those hours over 42 hours would be overtime, essentially qualifying for time and a half, the net effect of that law would be, if we moved to three platoon shifts, would be to pay 150% of what current firefighter salaries are. Hmm. And we can't afford that. And by the way, that would make, we're already outlier the rest of the country in terms of our cost. Hmm. 
if that law passes and any community was dumb enough to then move to a three platoon shift, we would have the most richly compensated firefighters in the entire country. Well, it's a, it's a checkmate not to move to a three platoon shift. That, it, that's, that's in effect what that is. And it's a shame and there's no way the General Assembly has any right to do that to us, but they may very well do it anyway. Well, yeah, and then the governor will have to decide whether or not she's going to veto. And um, so next week is going to be a very interesting week on all sorts of levels here. Yeah. The, the difficulties that Mayor Lorza leaned over the board, I think, a little too far. He said, listen, I want to move to three platoons by June 30th. But he didn't have any collective bargaining going on at the time, and reportedly he's offering, you know, pennies on the dollar for the additional regular time, and so his faulty negotiating caused the union to go the other way to the General Assembly. I agree the General Assembly has no role here, but they're playing it. Yeah. But the mayor's not helping the case, and now what he's done is caused this now statewide move, which implicates every fire department in Rhode Island. The, the, it, it's a shame. I mean, for me, it took 51 years to get master level legislation finally to get an up or down vote. How is it that the fire unions could put a bill in two weeks ago that stands a really good chance of passing in this week or next week? Okay? Where is the deliberative action of our General Assembly? Why do they feel the need to act in emergency format to deal with this issue? By the way, when I asked both the House and the Senate committees, did they have a fiscal impact statement for this bill? The answer was no. How can they go and pass a bill that can have gigantic financial consequences to cities and towns and not understand what those consequences are? Because they're this, acting on, on politics and on gut. It doesn't seem fair. What right. is it, is, and so that's what's but going it's on. that kind of lawmaking, that kind of decision making that just kills this state. And they have to knock it off. We can't afford it. Um, I wonder how many senators and reps really want to have this one on the record. It's one thing to have the early victory, right? of saying, all right, I'm aligned with labor, I'm aligned with the firefighters, who, by the way, I think have been mistreated in this firefighter, this, in this union, I'm sorry, in the Providence negotiation, I think the firefighters have been mistreated. I think the mayor way overstepped what he thought he could do. You're not gonna ask guys to work another 14 hours on, 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 on the clock and not pay them a commensurate regular rate to do so. The, so, so, that, so I think that's a big screw up, but having said that, I would imagine that there's a lot of state reps and senators who could pay the price for the impacts in their district of this legislation. There's no question. Look, we have to pay Rhode Island fighters commensurately with what other firefighters in other parts of the country make. That's really what needs or to happen. Or even prorated so, for what well, they're currently making. Well, the problem making. is, if you to, to prorate, to, to actually just give the firefighters 14 or more hours of straight time would still probably vault them to the very top of the pay scale and, and nationwide. And I don't know that it has and, to be that, that, I don't know that it has to be a dollar for dollar, hour per hour growth. Right. There's so there's there's the, a middle ground the, in there, but the, the mayor reportedly started yeah. it next to nothing. But I want to make no mistake, this bill, this overtime bill, absolutely pours gasoline on the burning firefighter cost problem that we have throughout the whole this whole state. People should get involved. They need to get involved. You need to talk to your legislators pronto and tell them you expect them to not pass this bill, reject this bill. And uh, the beat goes on. Fire. Hot issue, huh? Hot, hot, hot. Uh -huh. All right. Uh, final word and we come back. Stay with me. Now, listen, some developments uh, may be going on on this statewide law for overtime for firefighters and police, and we will certainly update you on that early next week and get into it on a day-to-day -day basis. But I will tell you, this is a big overreach by our General Assembly, and Ken Black is absolutely right. It's unparalleled and dangerous. Have a great weekend. We'll see you on the radio Monday. You and I, WPRO, back here Monday night.